Hey Sagittarius, this is your weekly tarot card reading from Born Without Boundaries Tarot, as well as your weekly astrology forecast. I'm going to sprinkle the astrology throughout the entire reading, but we'll start off with the astrology. Remember, any card that comes out in the center is what's happening now. Any card that comes out over here is what's happened from the past, but of course, it is directly impacting what is happening now, and then we'll get into the future. There's always an extended reading that I hope you'll join me for, um, as it's extremely in-depth and I think worth your time. But the links for that are right below. I'll attach it also to the top of this reading, toward the end of the reading, so you can just click on it and get right there. I'll also attach it to the top of the comment section. This is my um, first and premier YouTube channel, but I also have a second one, and it's called Astrology Motivation, where we focus on astrology for the week and astrology for the day. And I also do a daily tarot card reading over there that you can join me with. Um, because it's a live stream. So I hope to see you over there as well. This is your reading first and foremost for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, and Rising sign. Please apply it to where it resonates in your life. And if you feel inclined to check out your Rising sign video and your Moon sign video, they're all here, all 12 videos every single week. Please do subscribe to the channel so that you know when each of them is uploaded. The schedule for uploading is right below in the description box. So I like this week for you. Um, this week is actually going to be getting better as you go through it. Astrologically, Jupiter is in a much stronger position than it has been for a while. It is direct and it is also back in Aries where it will be for the, the primary portion of the beginning of this year. And it's strong and it's powerful and it's just filled with fire and expansion and growth. So you will have the energy and the natural curiosity to grow and expand and take chances as well as look for opportunities and, and grab them. Um, in fact, this time in your life can take you into directions you never expected it to go and you will feel that your vitality and energy has returned or is slowly returning. The aspects that Jupiter is dealing with in the beginning of this week start out difficult, but they get more, they get easier as the week progresses. In the beginning of this week, Jupiter is both square to the sun, which is a pretty difficult aspect, especially when, you know, your ruling dignitary is combating the sign that represents the ego and the self and the sense of self purpose. But usually a square between Jupiter and the sun is just that, a struggle between what do I do with my life and who am I and, and what is the necessary action to take to be the best of who I am. And because it can be very combustible energy, especially with Jupiter now in Aries, you could be over trying or you could be doing too much or you could be pushing too hard and therefore be too egotistical. That's the one sort of shadow side to the square between Jupiter and the sun. So it's really, really going to be important to be diligent with yourself and understand maybe you don't have to do that much. You don't have to push that hard or try that hard. Um, in fact, you could also be very volatile and pop offish right now, FYI. But that, that aspect goes away. Basically by midweek, you're going to be fine. And then we have Jupiter semi-square to Uranus, and that lasts all this week. But by the end of the week, that will drop away too, and you will feel this tremendous energy of just relief and happiness. I'll tell you why. Because around Saturday, Sunday, Jupiter, it becomes sextile to Venus. This is one of the most pleasant, beautiful, fortunate, and optimistic energies in the zodiac aspects. Um, the two of them are just really kind of combustion, combustion of positivity. And a sextile is a really well-grounded energy of purpose and passion. And that tells me whatever struggles that you had finding yourself in the beginning of the week or finding your way or making those choices, by the, by the weekend, there is this beautiful transition of really knowing and, and, and being able to have decided 
what really matters to you. Um, now the semi-square to Uranus still exists, and this means that for a while now you've been feeling pushed or pushed into situations that you don't like, feeling the discomfort of having to make choices that you don't even want to be a part of. Um, it's a very difficult relationship when there's a square or semi-square or says a square between Jupiter and Uranus. This is one of the few uncomfortable and kind of bad aspects. I don't want to say bad because everything is how you take it, but it is a difficult aspect, um, which is basically just kind of making you uncomfortable right now since it is only a semi-square, but it, it's making you feel like you're forced into a lot of things that you don't want to even be dealing with, but you are dealing with them and you have more vitality and energy to deal with them now. And by the end of this week, you won't have to deal with that energy anymore. You will just be left with Jupiter sextile to Venus, which is optimism, happiness, and a complete and, and a complete and total state of being where you want to be and knowing who you want to be with. You can expect a lot of support and love coming in, especially from your partnerships or potential partnerships. Let's get into the cards because I already have one in front of me. Four of Cups is here. Four of Cups is an interesting energy because it tells me that for most of this week, and it's showing up in the present, that for most of this week, um, you're deciding what you want. Maybe you don't feel very interested in the things that are offered to you and that you feel a little overwhelmed so you're not able to look for more or you feel like people are ignoring you and disinterested. Um, that's okay, the astrology absolutely supports that. It's interesting on this deck of cards um, how, how it, it kind of labels it as luxury. When I've always seen the Four of, Four of Cups as sort of pensive and I've always thought of it less of a luxury and more of a burden. But I think that this reminds us that even this state of not being able to make up your mind, maybe because of that semi-square to Uranus between Uranus and Jupiter, you don't really like what's on the table or you feel like it's being forced on you. So how can we like even chocolate or the most delicious food? How can we like these things if we feel like they're being shoved down our throat? So spend time and take your time and don't rush into any decisions, especially to the end of this week but it, it is it's just an optimistic way of seeing um, of seeing things the, you know the, the luxury of having enough choices to sit there and consider um, and then we have the princess of pentacles which means you will make a decision and you will plant your seed and make a choice and start something new maybe something that you have been thinking about for a while by that full moon that's coming in the next two weeks, you will absolutely have the clarity that you need to make the decision to plant that seed. Um, now, this is the Princess of Pentacles, so it does imply that it could be with work, but I don't think it has to be. I think you should apply it where it resonates, but you will be taking that chance and making a decision to move forward with something new and this is the week to do it. Eight of Pentacles confirms that it has something to do with work, work that you enjoy, work that you love to focus on, or maybe you're focusing on love and you're working on love. Whatever it is, it's prosperous and it's creating growth. You have figured out a way to nourish things enough so that they prosper and expand. It could be about going back to work, but if so, this is about work that you love. It's about work that you actually feel is, is working and you see the progress of being able to really double down and dedicate yourself you know, it could even be the energy of hell, why not? Why not? If I have all these choices on the table, why not choose the one that I'm really passionate about? And so I would ask you that question, Sagittarius. If you have all these options on the table, why not choose the one that is really coming from your heart? Because you do have the ability to do that this week. Interesting. 
and also really optimistic. We have the Wheel of Fortune here. Let's, we're gonna find out, we're gonna get more into the details. Ah, it's coming, dude, it's coming. It's, the message is coming, okay. So here was the problem. Here was the problem. In the past, this comes out, and this is Major Arcana, so it's going to impact you whether you want it to or not, but it's in reverse which means you feel weak, you feel vulnerable, or you feel not good enough, or there was something in your life that you were struggling with that was really draining your energy. That is fulfilled. The full moon is behind this. You, you're done with that. Why do I know that? Because, and here's your, here's your timeline. This was say last full moon. And then you have a new full moon that's coming up where because of all this sort of vulnerability or maybe you were physically weaker, maybe something emotionally happened to you, it just drained you. The feeling of being drained. And this was recent. This would have been something that happened to you not way back in your childhood, not 10 years ago, 11, 11. It's an awakening of your soul. It's like, it's like all of a sudden the lights have turned back on and you're feeling your vitality start to come back from whatever event this was that really drained you. And this is the first sign of it, which is the recognition that you do have choices. And this is the thing, it's like you're finally starting to see the things in front of you again. You're finally starting to awaken and be able to breathe again. Maybe you're finally going back to work for the first time after a long hiatus, or if you have been, if it's like you have been living life, but you've kind of been living it like a zombie, you've just been going through the motions. This is saying you're coming back online. You're gonna start to see and feel the world, the light and the air is coming back in. It's like you've shut yourself down or, or maybe you were shut down for the winter and for the winter. And please do leave the comments below. You know, I love to hear your stories. And I'm always curious to see how this energy has been playing out in your life. But I know that it really hasn't been the easiest of years for you. So here we have this sense of, okay, now at least you can look at things again. Now at least you can consider them again. And even in some ways realize, I don't have to keep anything old that I don't want. I can start completely fresh and choose to do something that makes my heart filled with passion. And I think it is coming from that place of total exhaustion and de de um, not depravity <laughs> um, and depletion that you have the strength to basically go ahead and, and choose to do what you've wanted to do for so long, to go in that direction and actually work at something that you adore instead of something that you just accepted. Because especially when you've been through the ringer, it's like you're back online and your optimism is back online. And it's just like, listen, I can work forever and a day at something that I really can't stand and something that I've settled for. And I can still fail at that. And life can still hit me with a being wrecking ball. So why don't I just, for the rest of my life or from this point on, live every day as a day that I'm proud of and a day that gives me joy and happiness. What you went through this year, the struggles that you've gone through this year were designed to push you to be the best of yourself and live your life at its optimal. I think now you're realizing how to make the choices to do that. We have the Wheel of Fortune and that's coming out now which means that yes, you are awakened. And I did see 1111 11 on the clock. Um, and that's what really excited me. So it's, it's like you're awakened now to the fact that this, first of all, this karmic cycle has finished. It's over the, the past and the struggle is finished. The suffering has finished. You've completed the cycle because you've learned something from it. And I think the lesson that you've learned is I got to live my life every day in a moment that I love, not waiting or making excuses. And whatever you didn't have the strength of the courage for before, you will now. There's also a lot of 
beautiful things coming your way, especially after this weekend, um, an opening and a broadening and expansion of your opportunities as well as your ability to go out and get them and attract them and realize that they're already yours and feel good enough for them again. It's just like everything's just gotten turned back on and then we finish off with this. Now this is just, we're gonna get into the future. So let's, and let's get some clarity on um, the Wheel of Fortune and what actually happened. But we have Nine of Cups here. Nine of Cups is by the next full moon. So we have a full moon coming up in two weeks because we just celebrated a, a new moon on Christmas Eve. So in the next two weeks, so we'd say uh, this full moon is coming up. There's going to be a full moon in Cancer. So then it would be the full moon in Leo. The full moon in Leo. By the full moon in Leo, there is a happiness and a vitality. Nine of Cups is wish fulfillment, is joy, is something a really, really good news coming through. And we're going to get deeper into what that might be too, but it could be individual. You know, it could be individual just for each of you. Let's get a little bit deeper. Wait, 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 wait. You know what? Since the moon is so important, let's first pull a moon card. I'm just going to show it to you. Happy birthday, Doug Danny. 623. A new romantic cycle begins. There it is. Now, what does that mean to you? You let me know. But I think to most people, they interpret, they misinterpret romance. So let me set you straight. Romance means idealism. The romantic period wasn't the period where everybody fell in love. It was when everybody looked at the world through rose-colored glasses. Everybody saw the optimism of life. So a new romantic cycle beginning is telling me that going into this new year, you will have a beautiful life. There will be a beautiful opening and expansion that's happening for you, an idyllic life, which means what? this awakening right now, this coming out of the dark, it's like you're having your own summertime right now, where in the middle of the winter, you actually start to wake up and your seed actually starts to sprout and you actually start to grow. Perfect timing, perfect timing. This is the sun warming you. This is that square to the sun having challenged you enough to shake you awake and get you back into life. And the happiness that you're going to experience in the coming months is exceptional. Now, it could literally mean a new romantic cycle begins. Even if you are with somebody, it could be awakening to a new, a new amount of good times and happiness and joy with them. If this is, you know, you've been single for a while, um, there's somebody coming into your life in the coming months. This is a new moon in Libra. New moon in Libra. We can follow that on the timeline as well because we've been bought up to basically the Aquarius full moon, finally realizing and getting sort of that boom to your heart and your heart coming back online. And yes, we're still going to get into what this Wheel of Fortune is, but I feel like it's your heart coming back online. And then we have by the new moon in Libra, which happens during Aries season. So let's say end of March through April, there is this new happiness and purpose that has come into your life. And I definitely want updates, but let's go back and look. Princess of Swords is here. So there was an idea that came to you or an email or an offer. Could be from a maternal figure or simply an idea that if you follow and if you trust will actually bring you a great deal of abundance. Like this is 3D abundance. Money, resources, as well as happiness and stability. The decision to know where your happy place is or an idea that leads you to a great amount of abundance. This is the Empress is one of the happiest cards in the deck. She is prosperous. Now sometimes she does represent 
a maternal figure, so it could be a message from your mother or an idea that your mother gives you or a conversation between the two of you that spur you into thinking this, but that's a little bit detailed. Generally speaking, it's an idea that leads to abundance. Now, it's an idea that's new. Maybe you're learning something new. Maybe you're going back to school. It's, it's something that starts small, so you're starting at the beginning because it is a princess of swords. It could be a conversation that you have that makes you all of a sudden think of this. But because of what you've been through, you'll want to focus on something that inspires you and it is in that work that you succeed, that you generate your own abundance. Let's see how that plays out and get deeper into this Wheel of Fortune in the extended. I'll see you guys there. The links are all over the place.